Hello. In this video, I give new users an overview of Generate Press Premium, which is a paid add on for Generate Press theme. I've installed and activated three things the Generate Press free theme, which you get from WordPress, the Generate Press Premium plugin, which you have to buy. And I'm using the Generate Blocks plugin, which is made by the Generate Press team. And if you're using the block editor, if you've moved away from the old classic editor and you're using the block editor, I highly recommend that you install Generate Blocks alongside Generate Press theme. After installing Generate Press, the first thing I need to do is to enable the modules. So in the dashboard, I go to Appearance, Generate Press, and we're in the modules tab. So all I need to do, I can either click this bulk action and activate all of the modules. If I want to, I can activate individual modules one at a time. Just click the activate option and you'll activate just that single module. If you're new to generate press, I recommend that you activate all of the modules and that way you get to see what they can all do. These modules, relate directly to the premium page on the Generate Press website. If you scroll down, you'll see a list of modules. We've got Site Library, Colors, Typography, WooCommerce, Elements, Menu Plus, things like that. And all of these elements relate directly to these modules here. So to be able to use these, for instance, to use the blog, module, you'd have to turn that on in this section we've just been dealing with. This is the blog section there. There are two places you need to remember in your WordPress dashboard after you've installed Generate Press and the premium add-on. There's this section here where we are, Appearance, Generate Press, and we've got the modules, we've got the site library, and in the site library you've got a good selection of ready-made layouts. Now it's only recommended that you use these on a brand new website because when you install one of the sites from the site library it will bring some content with it and that might be a bit confusing. So it's recommended that you only install one of these sites from the site library on a brand new website. But they're very easy to install. Hover over and then just click the preview to see what that particular site looks like. If you like it, you can use like a, an install feature. It's very easy to install. I'll do that in another video. Now the third button is Elements. I'm going to explain about Elements later on in this video. But I think of elements as things that can display on more than one page. So suppose you've got a call to action box that you want to appear on all the posts that you make, or you've got some kind of an ad banner that you want to appear on all posts in a certain category. Use an element to make that. But I'm going to explain more about elements in a, a minute or two. Now, in common with most WordPress themes, a lot of the settings are in the customizer. So I want to go to Appearance, Customize. There are a lot of options in the Generate Press Customizer, especially if you're using the premium add-on. So what I recommend is you click around in the Customizer and just get familiar with all the things are and just what's available because there's an awful lot of settings available. You can do a lot of things with the Generate Press Customizer. So click around and just get familiar with it learn what's available just just let it sink into your brain because there's a lot there is a lot to, uh, to to get used to here once you've got fairly confident that you know where all the settings are in the customizer you need to understand how to drill down to the setting you need now i've added a secondary nav bar up here just to make this easy to understand and what I want to do, I want to change the size of the font in that secondary navbar. So I'll start off with typography because I want to change the font size. 
and then I want to find the secondary navigation and I want to increase the size of the font. So if you watch the font size, I can change the size of the font. But what I can also do, if you look here, it says more secondary navigation controls. This is the more controls box and you've got links in that box. Now these links link directly to other settings for the navigation, well, the secondary navigation, which is what we're editing now. So if I want to change the background color of the secondary navigation, because I'm already editing the typography of secondary navigation. So to change the background color of secondary navigation, I can click colors, not backgrounds, because that's a background image. I'm going to click colors and change the background color to blue. And if I want to, I could change the hover color or the current color. So we change background current to a lighter blue. If I wanted it to be white, I'd choose default because that's the default color on this uh, theme. Or I could change it to yellow or just drag around to make my own color. But the important point, if I go back to the customizer, I don't want to save the settings. The important point is that you need to understand how to drill down. And the easiest way is to decide what you want to change. If you want to change a color, click color tab, click the thing you want to change. And then you, you drill down. So it's secondary navigation, and then I can make my changes. And remember there's this more control setting here with links that take you to more controls for the actual thing that you're editing at the moment. And in this case, it's the navigation bar. I mentioned earlier that there are things called elements. So what exactly are elements? Well, I think of elements as things that you can display on more than one page of your website. For instance, you could make a call to action box and display that call to action on all posts in a specific category. So if I scroll down, this is an element. Now I only had to make this element once, but because elements have display options, I can choose to display it on all of my blog posts or all the blog posts in one category. I could display it just on pages. There are a lot of ways you can display elements. If we go to a different blog post, go back to the blog, the different blog post. And this blog post has got the element there too. So we'll go back to the WordPress dashboard. I want to go to appearance. I can go to generate press where I can find the elements. There's the elements button there or from the dashboard, appearance, elements, and that takes me directly to the elements section of the site. Now you can add a new element and you get this choice here. You can choose a block element, a header element, a hook element, or a layout element. Use the block element to build things like call to action boxes that you want to display on more than one page of your website. Use the header element to make simple hero headers. And you could make a, a hero header for a whole category, or you could make a hero header that's just displayed on pages. But once again, the idea is you make something once and then you can choose which pages or posts it displays on. Now the hook element you'd use for adding things like Google Analytics code to your site. And the layout element lets you choose things like how many sidebars you've got on a particular category or a particular page or a particular post. Uh, you can choose to display or hide the footer and choose how many widgets you want in the footer widget area. You can disable elements, things like the featured image. You might want to turn the featured image off on certain posts and pages. The content title, you might want to hide that. It's a common need to turn parts of your page on or off and you can do that with the layout element. Now, if you look at this display rules option, 
This one lets you choose the location that the element you're making will be applied to. So you can, there's loads and loads of choices. You can do it on the entire site, single posts, all kinds of things, just on single pages, your archive pages. Now, once you understand how this works, you get really specific. So if I chose post, I can then choose if I want to, if I want that element to display on all posts, or I could pick a particular post and you can add more. So you can add several of these location rules, but it lets you really be very specific where a layout element or any other kind of element will display. It's really useful once you understand how it works. For instance, I could choose a category, post category, and then I get to choose which category. So my category about food. Now the element I've made will only display when a user is reading a category and the category is my food category. Any other time that element won't display. All elements have this, these display rules. The block element has a slightly different way of uh, showing the display rules, but the idea is the same. So I'm editing this block and if I scroll down, Although it looks slightly different, but these are still display rules. I can display in different ways. I can choose the location, entire site, category. And then choose which category. Or I could choose an individual page, an individual post. There's loads and loads of options. We'll finish with one really popular setting. Go back to the customizer, customize, I'll go layout, blog. Now if we go to the blog page, now I'll show you the page without the customizer so we can fit a bit more in the page. What we've got here is one of the many options for the blog page layout. In this instance, I'm using a three column grid with a masonry layout and the first post is featured. So I've got this big featured first post and if you look at the other posts, they fit together very nicely and that's called a masonry layout. WordPress is working out what fits where and it's putting things in positions where it will have big gaps and that's called a masonry layout but there's loads and loads of blog options. If I wanted my blog page to look a bit more like a traditional blog page in the customize, I could go to layout blog and then I'm going to make a few changes. I'm not going to show the post date or the post author. I'm going to change the location of the featured image. I'm going to align to the left. Change the image size to thumbnail. And then I'm going to turn off columns. And I get a much more traditional blog type listing. But there are loads and loads of options for the, for the blog settings. Just a quick reminder, you get to most of the settings through appearance, customize, and there's also appearance, generate press, which gives you three extra buttons, modules, elements, and site library. Well, I'll have to leave it there because it's turned into quite a long video. Generate Press is very powerful and it's got a lot of options that let you customize your website, especially 
if you combine Generate Press with Generate Blocks, which is made by the same team that make Generate Press. And in this video, I've been using the premium add on, which adds loads of extra options to Generate Press. There are a lot of good WordPress themes out there. But if you're a freelance web designer or you run a small agency, I highly recommend you give Generate Press a try. It really is a good theme. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and bye for now.